Hey everyone, it's Jacqueline at Pixie Dust PhD. I am filming this on Sunday, August 13th, 2023. This is the month 42 creator update. This past month, my life has been pretty hectic, so not gonna lie, I haven't really been keeping up with the Disney news. And also, because my life continues to be hectic, I'm not sure when this video is getting posted. So for the sake of timeliness and just the fact that I'm out of the loop, we're actually gonna skip Disney news reports this month. If I find the time and energy, I may link to a couple of interesting news bits in the description down below, or maybe put them in a pinned comment if you wanna chat about the news. Or as always, you can leave a comment down below and let me know what you think is exciting or frustrating, etc. going on, happy to have that discourse. But instead of talking about the news today, we're going to do a little rant in this front matter before we get into stats, analytics, and revenue. I do think there just always is some amount of negativity in the Disney Parks fan community, but it seems to be finding me <laughs> the past month more often. So not just general internet discourse about stuff, but um, the DMs I'm getting, the emails I'm getting, and occasionally like public comments even left on the videos have been kind of nasty. And it's one thing if you don't like what the company overall is doing, I think that's probably fair game, but I've been getting a lot more about cast members in the parks not being so magical. And I just disagree. I think that if you've had a not super pleasant interaction, you probably need to turn that around and ask yourself, like, what were you doing to elicit that out of the cast member? And also there just are basic things like cast members don't yell at people. Cast members aren't evil. Like, I don't know. It's really upsetting to me to have that come through. I'm not going to pretend that I curate this channel to be like the most positive place. If you want that, please seriously go check out Hyperion's Adventure podcast, Tom and Michelle, like do very intentionally curate a really positive Disney space if that's the kind of like happy-go-lucky vibe you want. I know that I'm not that. I try though to be realistic and sort of a middle line of like, yeah, things could be better, but things definitely could be worse. And when it comes to the cast members, like the frontline workers in the parks and at the resorts, like they're always the best, especially if you compare them to customer service in any other sector. And that's without even acknowledging the fact that they are overworked and underpaid and underappreciated. So yeah, overall, I just wanted to take a couple minutes here and say like, I'm not on your side about this, okay? I am pretty much always going to be on the cast member side. If you were telling me something heinous happened, I'm gonna guess that it was either your fault or another guest's fault or similar. Or there are some instances that I've seen broadly posted online or once or twice probably private message to me where I'm like, this is literally not possible. And I honestly think you're making it up. I do wanna be able to have honest discourse with you all. And yes, obviously not everything at the Disney parks is perfect. There are going to be some less than savory situations and those might involve cast members sometimes. But don't become nasty. Don't take it a step too far and start calling cast members evil or saying they're lazy, all this stuff. Like it's just not true and it's not welcome here. All right, moving on. Since we last talked, I did sketch out most of our upcoming trip down to Orlando. So we're doing both Universal and Disney. We're very excited. The trip is perhaps a little bit less planned at this point than I would prefer it to be, but my life has just been a little bit hectic. And also it's just a newer Disney. I mean, this is how it's been for a while, but in my head, I'm like, oh yeah, ADR time, six months out. We can like have our dining done and dusted long before we get close to the trip. And that's just not how it is anymore. Thanks so much for all of your comments and suggestions, whether that was on YouTube or Twitter or threads or Instagram, it's really been helpful. And I'm definitely not going to claim to have done everything there is to do in Walt Disney World. It's not possible. We definitely haven't eaten at every restaurant or anything like that. But I have noticed in planning this trip that we have done pretty much everything we want to. So I'm starting to get into the territory of if we don't want to repeat things, we're going to have to try things that maybe aren't like top of our list and they might surprise us or whatever. But it is odd, I guess, planning a vacation where I'm like, well, I'm not the most excited to go to Tony's Town Square or whatever, but like, let's give it a shot. And with that in mind, I do think that this cadence of us going every other year for a longer trip really makes a lot of sense. If we were going more often, I just don't even know what we would do. Like, I think we would burn out. I know that this isn't true for everyone, but I've definitely seen other content creators who live outside of driving distance of the Walt Disney World area go every six weeks, every two months, something like that for a year to two years. And sort of by the end of that, you can see their enthusiasm kind of like dwindle away. And I think it's because if you're going enough, it's not as new and as fun and as magical or whatever, potentially not for everyone again. But I do think I would fall into that camp. And on that same line of thought, we did talk about maybe upgrading to annual passes now that we are eligible through Disney Vacation Club to get the second highest tier. But money wise, it didn't really make a lot of sense. Um, it would have been more expensive than just adding a couple days onto our existing tickets. And also like 
I don't foresee a place with our job situations of being able to just like hop down to Disney World anytime soon. But even if we could, like, would I want to do that? I think I have a fantasy in my mind of getting an AP for one year and like going down once during every Epcot festival, maybe going down for my birthday, things like that. But like, how fun would that really be? I don't know. For some people, definitely super fun. But for me, I wonder if I would just feel like exhausted and not enjoy it as much. So anyway, planning this trip has taught me a lot. I think about our threshold of wanting to go to the magic. I'm hoping to go out to Disneyland Resort in California in like spring or summer of 2025 and host my family. And frankly, thinking about that trip has me more excited. I think just because I've only been to Disneyland once as an adult, so everything still feels really new and it still feels like there's a ton to do and see and explore and eat and drink. And yes, that's still true about Disney World, but it's not as exciting for me anymore. If you go down to Walt Disney World somewhat frequently, I would love to hear in the comments down below how you keep things exciting, fresh, and interesting, how you still feel excited to go to the magic. For the record, I'm not bummed out. Like, I still am excited to go. It's just planning this trip has been different than any of our other trips where I still had this big list of things I wanted to do. And now that list is pretty small. <laughs> Additionally, that trip is coming up. So if you have any requests for content, please leave those in the comments down below. In the past, when I've done vlogs on trips, I've done it kind of day by day style. So day one, here's what we did. Day two, here's what we did. I'm thinking about doing it differently this time and maybe doing discrete activities. So instead of having a 20 to a 25 minute video covering everything we did on day two, it'll be two videos of here's where we ate, here's some things we did. Let me know what you think, what you would prefer. I don't have a strong preference. It's just more of a planning thing for, obviously if we're going to do discrete videos, like each one probably should have some sort of intro and outro or it'll just be awkward like here we are. Versus if we're doing a whole day vlog, then I don't need to, you know, introduce myself for every activity. I have gotten some requests specifically for more dining reviews, which have been embedded in the vlogs in past trips. So I guess that's kind of why I'm thinking about at least pulling dining out and making it its own thing. But again, I'm really flexible. I'm also not much of a vlogger, honestly, so I don't have a preferred style. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. And last thing before we get into analytics, I did just want to give you an update on my July fundraiser for Feed the Fridge. Thank you so much to everyone who donated and spread the word. It really means a lot to me. As a community, we raised $828, so definitely blew me out of the water. We didn't quite get to $1,000, but I knew that that was a stretch goal in my mind. To even get close to that realm, I am so thankful. I did promise I would match up to $1,000, and the match is coming, I swear. I'm trying to get Feed the Fridge to enroll in the service called Benevity. It's like my workplace's recognized giving platform. I don't think my workplace is going to match it. It does sound like they might match like $25, which is still better than nothing. But, you know, I just want to try to do it through Benevity to raise awareness at my workplace. Maybe other people will donate then too if they see this one big lump sum going over to Feed the Fridge. The match is coming, I promise, and I will post proof somewhere, probably over on Twitter. Just again, a big thank you to everyone who donated. It really means so much to me. And while everyone's contributions are definitely valuable, I did just want to briefly shout out Jeff, who donated twice. Thank you so much. Adam donated the single highest amount. Thank you so much to Adam. And Bridget also donated twice, once through Ko-Fi and once through YouTube. This part of the Disney theme park fan community is absolutely what I'm here for. It's so heartwarming and touching to see you guys donate to a cause that means so much to me that may not really have anything to do with you or your community. But again, I think Feed the Fridge is such a great model and I hope to see it expand. Depending on my bandwidth, maybe I'll try to do a fundraiser yearly. We shall see what next July holds. With that, let's go ahead and get into stats, analytics, and revenue. We'll start with month 42. I pulled these stats from July 11th through August 10th. We posted quite a lot this month. I was trying to post a lot in July just to drive traffic to the channel, hoping that more people would see the fundraiser. We started the month off with the trip lowlights from our January 2023 trip down to Walt Disney World. And just a side note, again, with this like negativity versus positivity thing, Low lights videos always, always, always get more views than highlights videos, even when you adjust for time that they've been posted, which is so frustrating to me that people would rather hear about the bad stuff than the good stuff. I would hope they'd at least be equal, but whatever it is what it is. I guess that's like clickbait for you, right? Like here's everything that went wrong. It's not what I'm trying to put out into the universe, but I do, again, like to try to strike a balance of like, it's not gonna be perfect. Here's some things that didn't go perfectly, but we still had a good time. Anyway, this month we also posted the DVC welcome gift video as well as the last month's monthly creator update. And we did also post the Disability Access Service FAQ video this past monthly period. Previously, I had indicated that that wouldn't get posted until like August or September, I think. That's just kind of where I had it slotted because it wasn't timely, right? Like that's information I can post at any time. It's not linked to 
something coming out like bills at Disneyland Hotel or anything. But I decided to move it up into this monthly period because I thought it might be a popular video. Again, just trying to drive traffic to the channel for the fundraiser. I hope you all found that helpful. And if you do still have questions about disability access service, please feel free to leave those in the comments on that video. I am trying to help people out. And if again, I'm getting the same like big themes coming through, I could always make another DAS video. Then there were two videos I posted about the dining plan. First was just an overview about what the dining plan is, how it works, etc. for 2024 at Walt Disney World. And then I went ahead and cherry picked some quick service and table service restaurants that I perceive to be more expensive, perhaps more worth it if you use a dining plan credit and did a bunch of math to see if you could actually save some money. For adults at $57 or $95 per night for the quick service dining plan or the normal Disney dining plan, I mean, that just felt like a gut punch when I saw those prices. It seems really high for two meals a day. And I maintain that's true, but if you do careful planning, if you are going to eat the most expensive things on the menus or go to character meals or all you care to enjoy meals, then you can make it worth it. So it was kind of fun to prove myself wrong, but it was like very select places. You couldn't just kind of go and dine wherever and make it work per se monetarily. And friend of the channel, Jeffer, suggested doing a follow-up video that would be places to never use a dining credit at. I thought that was a really great idea. Thank you so much, Jeffer. So it's on my radar. I'm not going to promise it's going to come out in the next couple months by any means, but I think it could be fun to put together and just show you like, yeah, the dining plan can be really overpriced depending on where you eat or what you eat. And the last two videos posted in this monthly period were our highlights from our trip down to Walt Disney World in January of 2023 and the first of a conversation series with my friend Jen from Dills Diz where we're talking about kids at Walt Disney World. That first video specifically, we're talking about the logistics and realities of bringing a stroller. For top content this month, there were four shorts and six proper videos. Two of the shorts were Hogwarts based over at Universal, so Harry Potter fans may be finding the channel for the first time. And three of the six proper videos were room tours. Obviously all four shorts were posted this month, but then also the DVC welcome gift proper video was posted this month, the low lights from our Disney trip video was posted this month, and the 2024 dining plan math video we posted this month. So not bad in terms of more than half of the top monthly videos we actually posted this month. In month 42, we got just over 11,000 total views, and that came from just shy of 8,200 unique viewers. 950 of you were returning, which is astronomical for me, so thank you so much. I do have a favor to ask because this was so unusually high. If you could let me know why it is you return, and if there was anything special about this month that definitely kept you coming back, I would love to know. It would help me out so much. All those views from those viewers resulted in just over 500 total watch hours this month. The channel got a little bit over 100,000 impressions this month with 45.4% of those impressions coming from YouTube. And in total, the channel had 30 new subscribers this month. Looking at other social media over on Twitter, I am following 1,434 accounts and 1,088 are following me. And on Instagram, I'm following 773 accounts and 510 are following me. I mentioned this the other day on Twitter, but basically I don't use Instagram for its intended purpose in terms of posting pictures or reels all the time, but I do use my stories function pretty often to give you a sneak peek into my day-to-day -day life. And by that, I mean most of that is drinks and food that we either make at home or go out to get. So if you're interested in that part of my life, check out Instagram. I do post on stories far more regularly than I post to the actual Instagram feed. For lifetime analytics, overall the channel now has just under 238,000 views and just over 15,500 watch hours. Lifetime, the channel has amassed 2.4 million impressions with 36.5% of those coming from YouTube. And overall, we are sitting at 1,430 subscribers. Doing some reflections, I'd say it was a bit of a mixed month. Part of me thinks it was a fairly average month, but I do think that's with the asterisk of average for lately, not average for the lifetime of the channel. Lifetime, we're still doing really well, but for the past five or six months, you know, some things were better, some things were worse. We are still getting over 10,000 views a month, which is great, but it's just barely, we're just barely over 11,000 now, and that was worse than last month. Similarly, Watch Hours is still over 500 a month, which I'm happy about, but it is a decrease from last month. Interestingly, the overall number of impressions was down, but my impressions from YouTube number recovered a ton compared to last month. And watch time from those not subscribed was also better this month than last month, so that's good, I think. That being said, we did only get 30 subscribers. It's not terrible, it's one a day, but it's not great. For the channel's year three to date, I think we're probably hovering around one and a half subscribers per day, which again is not bad by any means. I'm not going to complain, but we did have a couple months in a row there where it was like two a day and I kind of hoped we might keep up that pace. It doesn't seem like that's happening. Lifetime things are plucking along though. It is possible we could hit 
250,000 lifetime views next month. I don't think it's probable, but it is possible. So that's neat. We're nearing in on that milestone at the very least. And we did cross the 15,500 watch hour milestone this month. So maybe 16,000 hours next month. And the watch time from those not subscribed to Lifetime this month did improve compared to Lifetime last month. If you are watching this, would you do me a favor and check to see if you are subscribed? If not, please click that button. It's totally free for you and it would definitely help me out. As you can see, historically, roughly 70% of the people that watch the channel are not subscribed. So my subscriber numbers could be really different if y'all would just throw me a bone. <laughs> but no, really, I do appreciate everyone who subscribes and likes the videos and comments on the channel and shares with friends and interacts and donates to my fundraisers. Like it's, it's really great. The next little goal for subscribers obviously is going to be 1,450, but definitely now that we're in 1,400, I am chasing 1,500. And then once we get there, the next bigger milestone is 2,000. Who knows when that will happen, but we'll take it day by day. For revenue this month, it's estimated I made just under $50. That's about $16 for every thousand ad views or about four and a half dollars for every thousand views in general. We did also get that super thanks from Bridget. Thank you again. I am counting that amount toward the Feed the Fridge fundraiser, but it does count for my monthly revenue stats. Small side note, Bridget did give me a super thanks for about $25, but then in the revenue it's showing up as $12.25. I looked into this and the super thanks processes say that the creator keeps 70% and then YouTube takes 30%. So I'm guessing it's extra taxes or something that are bringing the amount down further, but whatever it is, what it is. I'm kind of just showing this as a demonstration for those of you who are creators and aren't yet at the monetized level. Like if you are bringing money in from YouTube, you don't get hundred percent of that money. And then also for you all who are creators, but interact with YouTube content creators, if they have other ways of collecting money, like Ko-Fi has far less fees, I think, than donating directly from YouTube. I'm not criticizing Bridget in any way. I am still super grateful and I'm counting the full $25 amount for my Feed the Fridge fundraiser. But yeah, depending on, you know, how you want to support creators, if you do want to do that monetarily, it may be better to go through their Patreon or their Ko-Fi or some other means than YouTube. If we don't count the super thanks and we're looking really just at ad revenue, we made about $37. Again, a vast majority coming from actual videos and almost nothing coming from the shorts. Overall, for the lifetime of the channel, this puts us just shy at $450. That's about $17 for every thousand ad views or about $2 for every thousand views in general. In this past monthly period, I did receive my third paycheck from YouTube. It was just shy of $150. For those of you keeping track, I am three paychecks in now and I think we're about 10 months having been monetized. And I do want to take that money and invest it back in the channel. I reported out last month that I did purchase a new camera. It is the Sony ZV-1 Mark II. I'm filming on it right now. I'm really enjoying this camera. I'm still learning a lot of the functionality. And the one bummer I would say right now for me is I haven't figured out if it's possible to film and like while you are filming video, if I press the shutter button, also take a still picture. There is a way after you've taken the video to view your video and playback, play the video and then like take a still shot wherever you want. But obviously it's not the same as like doing it live. But other than that, I'm really liking it. I think the native audio sounds really good in a setting like this where I'm just sitting and talking to the camera. I'm not so sure about, you know, being out in the real world or like in the theme parks, for example. So I do still want to buy some better wireless mics, I think, before we go on our trip. It is a lot of dollars, though, so I am putting that purchase off kind of as long as I can. But yeah, just having this camera is making my life so much easier. And if you are a content creator and have the disposable income to buy a better vlogging camera, if you're just using your phone or something, like I would highly suggest you do it. For me, especially this is true because I use an iPhone, but then I work on a PC. So filming on the iPhone actually is pretty fine overall. I don't have many complaints, but then getting that file to my PC, if it's a longer video file, is heinous. It often won't do it like it'll spend five minutes transferring a file and then you get the file and it's only like three seconds long because there's some limits that Apple imposed about transferring large video files, which is so annoying. And if they're large, obviously they're too big to upload to your iCloud if you just have free iCloud, which I do. So yeah, in the past, there have been days where I will sit down and film a video for, you know, 30 minutes or whatever on my iPhone and then just getting it to my computer so I can start editing because I have to go through all these workarounds and all these steps takes like two hours. So having a vlogging camera with an SD card that I just pop out and put it into my computer and it just transfers over right away. Like, oh, it's so great. It's so much better. <laughs> I'm so happy. It absolutely was an excessive purchase and I'm not going to pretend it'll pay for itself anytime soon. But like in my happiness and my day to day grind of doing this, like, yes, it has paid for itself in that sense. Looking to the future, last month I did warn you that there may be a pause in uploads. 
And as I think I mentioned at the top of this video, my job is just really hectic right now and I'm not too sure when that's gonna stop. Before my job got like this though, I did work really hard to film a bunch of videos that I can upload sort of whenever, you know, they're not super timely and don't have to go at a specific time hooked to a specific event. So I do have enough content to get us through next month and the month after, so mid-October. After that, I'm not so sure though, because I just am spending so much time working right now that I really don't have time to work on the vlog. For example, in my head, I wanted to wait for the first Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween party to happen, which just happened a couple days ago, I think, and then like make a how would I tackle the Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween party short video. And I just don't know if I have the bandwidth for that. It's not something that I've scripted at this point. I'm not ready to film all of that. So yeah, it's um, the next few months will be an interesting challenge for me. <laughs> That being said, again, we are good through mid-October. Here is the list of things that are almost certainly going to get posted. You may have already seen this video, but I did film talking about buying DVC and comparing my experience with the resale market versus my experience buying direct. Then my partner Adam and I are going to chat about how would we improve Magic Kingdom? So that'll be a fun one. He has some choice things to say. There are two more in my conversation series with Jen about kids at Walt Disney World. One will be about food and one will be about rides. I've got two more Disneyland Paris videos coming up. One was about my experience with my luggage when we were checking in and checking out of our resort hotel. It, it's not that, it just took me by surprise and I thought people might wanna know. And then the other is about the hotel guest early entry procedures. Very true to the heart of the channel, we've got a nerdy math video coming up about the Riviera Tower Studios. I really enjoyed that. I think Peter suggested it at one point, so thank you so much, Peter. Um, I hope you guys like it, but it is definitely on the nerdier side of the spectrum of the channel. Then a few weeks ago, I filmed just me talking about how I would maybe improve the Disney Vacation Club user experience for members. A couple weeks after I filmed that video, a bunch of media sites and influencers were hosted by Disney as honorary DVC members. And if I have time, I might film a small rant about that because it really rubbed me the wrong way. But again, like with my work right now, making no promises about that rant, but we'll see. And then I've also got a video coming up about parking at Walt Disney World. So not only parking logistics, but how we could maybe improve parking at Walt Disney World, as well as explaining the Dream It Forward program and the current reward. That is a look at the next couple months. And I am still going to try to do a monthly creator update, but I'll also say just with my work situation, this is your warning that it might not happen every month now, at least for the next handful of months until things settle down, which like right now, as of today, I don't know when things are going to settle down. If there are going to be interruptions to the channel, I surely will post on the community tab on YouTube. Also, in case you aren't checking the community tab for my page on YouTube, if you subscribe and then turn on all notifications, you should get a notification when I post over there. Most recently, I've been posting about the intersection of Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween party dates, as well as happily ever after showings, and then extended evening hours for deluxe and villa guests. You can also follow me on Ko-Fi where I may shift more of those text posts over to because I do feel like most of you don't see the posts on the community tab. And if you really wanna stay up to date with what I'm up to, Twitter probably is your best bet. I know a lot of you aren't on Twitter, but if I'm silent on the YouTube page for some reason and you haven't seen me, you know, check the community tab, check my Ko-Fi and check my Twitter. I hope you all are having a good end to your summer and your lives are less hectic than mine, or if they are hectic, hopefully it's for a good reason like mine. Thank you again so much for being here and especially for donating to the fundraiser or spreading the word. I super appreciate it. It is so meaningful to me. I cannot even express it. May the rest of your day be magical, and we'll see you real soon at Pixie Dust PhD.